hear me? You can just type it in the comment section. Let me put something on the board. If you're seeing and hearing clearly, you can just type and let me know. All right. All right, so I'm going to wait about two minutes and then I start. All right, so two more minutes and then I start working the questions. Look at it. All right, I'm going to start now. All right, so I'm going to ask the questions first. If you have the answer, you can type it here. All right, so we'll work the questions together. So the first question is, distinguish between structural isomerism and stereo isomerism. Did you want to take a chat that? So anybody, you can answer. So the first one, that should be a straightforward one. The difference between structural isomerism All right, I'll give a minute to see if anybody want to answer it. All right, no one is answering. All right, so structural isomerism. All right, these prefers to compounds meant of atoms are different. So just remember with structural isomerism, there is something different about the structure. So the way in which the atoms are connected, it is different between the two compounds. All right, they must have first, they must have the same molecular formula. But the way the atoms are connected, it's, it is different. With stereo isomers now, right? So all isomers are going to have the same molecular formula. But with stereo isomerism, unlike so with structural isomerism, sorry, stereo isomerism, the connection is unstable. 
with structural isomerism, the connectivity is different between one arm of the atoms. With stereo isomerism, so we have some compounds here, and our first job is to identify position isomers and chain isomerism. All right, so the two main types of isomers are the stereo isomers and the constitutional and chain and functional group, the same molecular formula. We're going to do the chain isomerism first. So we have four compounds. So look for two compounds with the same molecular formula, but the carbon atoms are arranged differently. So which two compounds? Come one, two. This is compound three. So which? So first of all, which two compounds have the same molecular formula? Just type it in the comment area. Which of these two compounds have the same molecular formula? All you have to do is type, no one is hearing you. Just type the answer. So compounds are the same molecular formula. Right, but this is correct. Any other two? Do you? They have the same molecular formula. Any more? If you look at two and three, right? We have four, four carbons here, that's C4. If you look here, one, two, sorry, one, two, three, four. So we have four carbons again. Let's take the hydrogens. Three, six, nine, ten. C4, H10. This one, 3 and 2, 5 and 2, 7, 3, 10. So clearly, compounds and right, 2 and 3. So now, remember the first criteria. So for chain isomerism, you are looking for two compounds with the same molecular formula. The carbon skeleton is going to be different. And if you look at this one, which is, so I'm going to switch it from the condensed formula. So that is what we have, C4, H10. Right. so as you can see, all the carbon atoms here are in a straight line. With this one, Right. So you can see that both the carbon atoms are in the same chain, right? One chain. So one, two, three, four, that compound is in the same chain, but one of them form a branch. I will know that the CH3 group is called methyl. So three carbons in the straight chain, we know that that is going to be propane. We have a methane and we have two methyl propane. So same molecular formula, but the connectivity of the carbon atoms are different. And so isomerism. Isopene. All right. So now, let's look on position isomerism. Position isomerism, the struct again, same molecular formula, right? But we are going to have a specific group on the compound 
that we are going to shift from one carbon to the next. So we position isomerism, the position of a particular group is going to be different. So if you look here on the nitro group, now this one is one three, but this is one four. And that's how we get the particular group is different in the two compounds. In this case, both these are on the same carbon atom, right? So the only thing that is different between these two is the position of this NO2 group. This that shows position isomerism and compounds. This was compounds two and three, that is chain isomerism. Right, if you have any question at this point, you can ask. Right, so I'm going to wait a minute. If you have any question, you can type it. All right, let us look at the next question. Part of the questions already. So for this one now, we have to identify one of these compounds. Remember, what a chiral carbon is. Anybody remember what is a chiral carbon and how we identify it? Okay, so flow, 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 flow. Anybody remember, Sabrina? Remember what is a chiral carbon? Right, so chiral carbon is a carbon atom with four different groups attached. So we have four compounds on the board, right? And we are looking for a carbon, right? So the engineer, four. Now, so let's go upstairs, right? And we need a carbon atom with four different groups attached. So clearly, this carbon here, so let us start with number two. This carbon atom, it has three hydrogens attached. Remember, the carbon atom, as I said, it must have four different groups attached. This one has three, right? This carbon here, so remember, I right, let me use the next column. Let me different groups attached. It don't have to be an atom, right? So when you're going to identify a chiral carbon, so let's say we are just looking at the carbon here in the center, right? You are going to identify it. Then everything to the left of it is a group. That means if we are looking at this carbon, right? The one in the middle to see if it can be a chiral carbon, everything to the left of it is a group. That means this is a group. This CH3 is a group. Everything to the, that's an, a next group. Everything below it is a group. In this case, we only have a hydrogen atom below it. So that is still a group. And and then we have a CH3 group up top. Now, if you look, this is a CH3 group, this is a CH3 carbon. And obviously, this one, it doesn't have any. Right? Now, benzene, oh, let me just draw benzene. Like this.
And it must have what? Alternate, double, and single bonds, right? Like that. Now remember, chiral carbon must have four different groups. Every carbon in benzene ring, because it's forming, because of the double bond, four groups must be attached. None of these carbons can be carried. Right, so this one, it will have a work in no two group, it have a hydrogen. This one will have a work in no two group. This will have a mixed hydrogen. Remember the molecular formula for benzene is C6, A6. So the two hydrogens that are here have been replaced by the NO2 group. All right. So that is benzene. Clearly, none of the carbon has four groups attached. All of them has three. So looking at this carbon, one group, two group, three group. Right? So because the carbon atoms that are next to a double bond cannot be chiral because you will only get three groups attached and you, want, and you need four, all right? So both of the benzene rings are out because all of them, all of the carbons have double bonds, right? Or if we did have hybridization, so we know that all of them are sp2, and the last one, let me check. No, I am going to I am going to label them. So the first carbon, I'm going to call it A, the second one B, the third one is C, and the fourth one is D. Now one of them is definitely a chiral carbon, right? So which one of them is the chiral carbon? I'm going to wait and let you answer. So I want someone to tell me which carbon atom is chiral. I remember as I showed you with compound number two, when you want to find the carbon atom, angina and dejane says C. Anybody else? So angina and dejane as it for C. Anybody else? All right. Fennel says C as well, everybody are C. So I think we can agree that it is C. So let's look at what happened at C. So if we're looking at C, it's a hydrogen. Everything below it is a group. In this case, the OH. That's a group. So clearly, you can see that the this carbon, it has four different groups attached. An ethyl group, a hydroxyl group, a hydrogen atom, and the carboxyl group. Right, so this is the answer. Right? Type of isomerism exhibited by this compound. So if it's a chiral carbon, which carbon, which type of isomer has chiral? carbon present. Which I saw? I'll give you a minute to jog your memory. It's geometric is for alkenes. So if it's not constitutional and it's not geometric, which one leaves? Which 
cada um no livro. Optical, right. So optical isomers, those are the bonds with the chiral carbon present. Right. Since we're as since we're an isomer, before we move on, let's once you have a chiral carbon. On top of chiral carbon atom, then we have, a, we have optical isomerism. Right. So once it's chiral carbon, that is for optical isomerism. So let's let's do an ex example for geo name for geometric isomerism. When you get the alkene, right? The two types of isomers are cis and trans. So alkenes, trans. Now the first thing you're going to do, right? When you get the alkene, you are going to locate on this carbon here. These are the two carbons of the double bond. So you write them. So C, double bond, C. We're not going to put it in the C, right? Because remember now, geometric isomerism is an example of stereo isomerism, right? And it, has, it has the same connectivity, but the arrangement in space is different. So we have to show the arrangement in space. Now, once you get like this, right? So this carbon, right? That's it right here. What is attached to this carbon? We have a hydrogen atom, right? And we, then we have CH2, right? And the CH3 group. Well, then now, let's go to the next carbon. Right? Let me call it A and B. Right? So we are finished with carbon A. Now let's go to carbon B. Carbon B, we have CH3. And this is a CH2 group. Now this will have to be a CH3 group. Right. Remember, every carbon must form four bonds. Okay. Now, so the question is, would this be a, geo, a geometric isomer? Before you answer, let me just give a simpler example. So for you, for the compound to exhibit geometric isomerism, we have the double. So in this case, we have hydrogen, the hydrogen in common. If they are, so when they are on opposite sides, they are, that is in the trans configuration. No, the groups cannot be on the same carbon atom. Because if the hydrogen was here, we cannot get them on opposite sides on the same side. Meaning, so, they are on opposite sides here. So in the next configuration, the hydrogen atoms can be on the same side. All right? If they are, so the first thing you must look for, the carbon atoms, right, of the double, of the double bond, 
both of them must have a group in common. In this case, it's hydrogen, right? Once they have a group in common, then it can be arranged so that they are opposite sides of the double bond, that is trans, or they can be on the same side of the double bond, which is cis. Now remember, with a double bond, right, it prevents the molecule from from rotating. So the carbon to carbon double bond, the case will remain as cis, right? So I saw two answers here for this component. So Sabrina and Miss Well, not sure to pronounce the first name. Right. This is not a, they do not have a group in common. The methyl group here, both of them are on the same carbon atom. Right? Once they're on the same carbon atom, it cannot work. Remember, both carbon atoms must have the, the same group. Right? And so they can arrange on opposite sides or on the same side of each other. So this is not a geometric isomer. However, if I switch out, if I put CH, CH3, right? Then it means that would we have a geometric isomer now? For this compound, would it be cis or trans? What would it be? Look at it. Cis. That is correct. Generally. All right. So both hydrogen atoms are on the same side of the double bond, so it is cis. So if you if you wanted to get the trans configuration, all you need to do, you can bring the hydrogen below and this metal group above, or you can bring it over here. Bring the hydrogen down and the metal group up. So but hydrogen Make space for me. All right, let me fix this one. Since I don't have enough space. So, all right. So now you can see that the hydrogen atoms are across from each other. And so this one is trans. So this is cis and this is trans. And so as a reminder for optical isomers, sorry, for stereo isomers, it's either going to be geometric, which only the keys, right? And it's either going to be cis or trans. And then you have optical isomers which is when a compound as in a chiral carbon, right? So those are the two types of stereoisomers that we look at for here, position and functional group. All right, so let's continue now with the first paper question. And by the way, if you have any question, you can add it. So they had asked for the chemical name for the compound. Let's do that. All right. Without the without the OH group and the compound, what would be the name of the compound? So which compound is this? Without the OH group, I mean, what is the name of this? Very old first paper, 2000. So working up on the stream already in afterwards. Right, so, right, it's butanoic acid. That's the Kaisha. Right. Now, when you have OH2, if you 
OH group is present, the OH group it becomes a substituent. So it's still, so the parent name is butanoic acid. Right? The OH group, when it's a substituent from the carb from the carboxyl end. Now remember this is total of group. We're at 20, uh, 20, 21. The syllabus has changed. So we won't get a compound to name with both the OH and the carboxyl group. But if it's but in regular working of questions, when you have the carboxylic acid and the OH group, the carboxylic acid it gets the preference over the OH group in terms of the period name. So it is still going to be butanoic acid, and then the OH group we call it hydroxy. So it is two hydroxy butanoic acid. All right. So time for some calculations. Biomass. All right. So carbon sixty-two point zero seven percent oxygen is twenty-seven point five eight percent and hydrogen is ten point three five percent. Right, so it says it's the composition by mass. So we're working the empirical formula, by the way, right? So the question asks us for the empirical and the molecular formula. So the first thing we're going to do here is use these figures to calculate the empirical formula. So whatever number you're getting percentage, it's basically in grams. So I want to see it is present following the composition by mass. So if this is present, put it in grams. So if you have 62 percent, the first thing we're going to do is work out the mole of each atom. So we have carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. So if we're going to work out the mole, we know that it is the mass given divided by the molar mass of the compound. In this case, it's for carbon, and we know carbon is 12 grams, all right? 10.35 for hydrogen. The mass of hydrogen is 127.58. For oxygen, oxygen is 16. I wrote this already, so let me just look for the answer. And so for this one, for carbon, you will get 5.173 with oxygen. So if you remember correctly or you don't, once you calculate the moles for each of the atoms, right, you are going to compare the three answers you get, right, and divide it by the smallest number. In this case, it is 1.724. All right, so the molecular formula for this compound is not the molecular formula. The empirical formula is C3 860. Right? So that's the empirical formula of our compound C3 860. 
Alright, so and that's how we get this. Alright, so the question it has said, so let us just continue. So first, so the two isomeric compounds A and B possess the following compositions by mass. Alright. It gave us the relative molecular mass of the compound, which is 58. Then it says A and B, the formula for A and B, and the other reactions, right? It asks for the empirical and molecular formula, because you are going to tell me which functional group is this. All right, now to get the, to get the molecular formula, we're going to add the, we will calculate the molar mass for a compound. So let's say sulfuric acid is 98. So we are going to say to get the mass of your empirical formula, you would say 12 and 3 atoms of carbon, right? Times the mass and then one atom of oxygen. Right? And so that will be 36. Plus six, plus sixteen, and you should end up with fifty-eight. All right. So the empirical formula mass of your compound is fifty-eight. Now, once you get the molecular formula, so we are going to find a number. We just let's say n, right? We are going to find n, and n is the relative molecular mass of the compound divided by the empirical formula mass. All right, so remember the empirical formula mass, it was 58. And from the question, the molecular formula, the molecular mass of the compound, it was also 58. So 58 divided by 58, and it's equal to one. What that means, right, let's say a formula by two. So if the answer get here is two, it, you would have said C3 H6O times two, and you would have gotten C6 H12O2, right? So whatever number you get for N, that is what you are going to multiply the empirical formula by now because n is one then anything you multiply by one is going to stay the same right so your empirical formula and your molecular formula is the same right so the question that asks calculate the empirical and molecular formula of A and B. This is the calculation, right? So right here, you see C3A6O, that's where we got the empirical formula. To get the molecular formula, we continue by first calculating the empirical formula 58, right? Then we work out N, which is to divide the relative molecular mass of the compound which will be given in the question by the empirical formula mass. In this case, both of them turn out to be the same. So we end up with one. And so because MC3 86 O, right? All right, so after they gave us the molecular mass of the compound, in the question, they started to do some reactions of compound A and B. Yes, in the question it says, the second sentence, the relative molecular mass of each compound is 58. Right, so it's always going to be given in the question. All right, so it says A and B produce yellow precipitate with the Brady's reagent. So listen for the things now. So A and B produce yellow precipitate with Brady's 
reagent. A gives yellow, A, A gives a positive set with Collins reagent. So let me put the changes on the board of reactions, which functional group comes to mind. Once a year, Collins reagent and Brady's. Collins reagent. So the both of them give a yellow precipitate with Brady's reagent. Yes, carbonyl compound, right? Angina. That the functional groups that react with Brady's reagent is the carbonyl compounds, which are aldehydes and ketones. That means A and B, one of them is an aldehyde and one is a ketone, right? So the question now is, which one is the aldehyde and which one is the ketone? So both of them give a yellow precipitate with Brady's reagent. And we know that both the aldehyde and the ketone reacts with Brady's reagent. So we cannot use this observation to know if it is an aldehyde or a ketone. But the next observation now, it says A gives... Right? And it is easily oxidized. Now, if you remember correctly, the aldehyde or the ketone, which one is easily oxidized? Is it the aldehyde or the ketone? Which one is easily oxidized? And which one only will react with the Collins reagent? Is it aldehyde or ketone? Aldehyde, correct DNA. That means compound A is your aldehyde because they tell you that A gives a positive test with Collins reagent. Anybody know the color change? Anybody remember it? What's the color change? Uh, what do you expect to see for the Collins reagent? Let me see if anybody remember. What would be the observation? Or what is the next name for the Tallinn's reagent? Right. The journey says it. A silver precipitate will form on the test tube, right? On the walls of the test tube. Right, silver atoms and the walls of the test tube. So for Collins reagent, it is also called the silver mirror test. So for B, it says B is not easily oxidized. So we know that A is the aldehyde and B is the ketone. All right. So the first question that asked was to calculate the empirical and the molecular formula, and we did that. Then it says now, deduce the structure for A, B, C, D, giving a reason for your answer. So let's finish the question. 
You can say B is not easy. So it's a positive test with tolerance reagent easily oxidized to compound C. So A is oxidized to compound C. Right? And then B is not easily oxidized. Then it says C produces dense white fumes with SOCl2. Now this is, once again, SOCl2, if you remember your organic chemistry, once again, SOCl2, you're supposed to remember which functional group is present. So C is going to react with this to produce compound B. And they gave us a little more clue, right? Dense white fumes, right? Now, again, this is 2,000 plus, if I read. So the part about the white solid being formed, that part is removed from this syllabus. All right? So let's go now. How we identify the structure of A, B, C, and B? We know that A and B are, A is the LDI, and A and C is not A, C and B. So C, we can figure out what C and, and B is. And tell me. All right, so we know A is the aldehyde. And aldehydes, they have a C double bond O H functional group. And we know B is the key tone. Let me put it here. C is carboxylic acid, correct, Dijanin. So if you remember, the aldehydes, they are oxidized to carboxylic acids. So Dijanin and Tannin, they are correct, actually carboxylic acid. Now when carboxylic acid react with SOCl2, and what you remember aldehyde is, by the way, what would be the name of the aldehyde? What is the name of this aldehyde? It has three carbons. So tell me, even though Christian does not ask for the name of A and B, tell me the name of A and B. Anybody? What would be the name of the aldehyde and the ketone? All right, region says D is an acyl chloride. That is correct. All right, region um, good. And angina, right. It's propanol. So A, propanol. So remember aldehydes and alcohols, the names are kind of kind of similar in terms of the ending. It, it end in A L, whereas the alcohol would end in O L. And Angina says B is proper known, but is correct. Alright, so A is proper null. And B is propanol. So if A is going to form C, which you say is a carboxylic acid, propanol would be converted to which carboxylic acid? So what is the name of the carboxylic acid that will be produced? Mm 
ਤੁਸੀਂ ਸੀ ਕਰ ਲੈਣ ਪਰ ਕਿਹਦਾ ਪ੍ਰੋਪੋਲੇਕ ਅਸੀਂ ਇਸ ਕਨੀਲਾਂ ਦੀ ਜਨੇ ਦਸ ਕਰ ਅਸੀਂ ਸਭ ਦੇ ਆਸਾਸ ਫਾਰ ਦਿਸ ਚੈਪਟਰ ਆਫ ਏ ਬੀ ਸੀ ਐਂਡ ਬੀ ਐਂਡ ਗਿਵ ਰੀਜ਼ਨਸ ਫਾਰ ਆਵਰ ਆਨਸਰਸ so let's go c and d now when a carboxylic acid reacts with SOCl2 when it reacts with SOCl2 the OH and it is going to be replaced with cl all right so when going to be replaced by one of the chlorine atoms of socl2 so this chapter is what we call an acyl chloride what the general term is acyl halide so the general term is a halide halide meaning halogen in this case it's chlorine so it is an acyl chloride all right so in this case the halide is the chloride ion all right so it's acyl chloride all right so when you react SOCl2 with your acyl with your carboxylic acid you get the acyl halide SO2 and HCl and so right so all right reasons now so we have the structure of a b c and b so we know that c3 h6 o right and the observation they gave us so what could be molecular formula so once we get the molecular results it's aldehyde r ketone so we were not sure when we were not sure if it's aldehyde or ketone so patients know is what is going to tell us that if it is an aldehyde or ketone so we use the observations to tell us it is an aldehyde or ketone specifically now a forms a yellow precipitate so your reasons for the answer the first one the molecular formula c3h6o that that formula fits both aldehyde and it fits ketones the observation is what we use to confirm it so a yellow precipitate forms with Brady's reagent that goes for both aldehyde and ketone right so that one we take it off but to differentiate them now only the aldehyde will react with Collins reagent so we know is an aldehyde which reagents again Brady's reagent and Collins reagent good so the molecular formula matched up to an aldehyde and the results positive results for Brady's reagent and positive results for the Collins reagent positive result for the Brady's reagent but not the Collins reagent because ketones are not easily oxidized all right so we know B is a ketone because again the molecular formula matches with the ketone propanone right and then now the results positive result for Brady's reagent but negative for sorry yeah positive for Brady's and negative for Collins and they tell us it is not easily oxidized and that is true of ketones c we know c is a carboxylic acid because when aldehydes are oxidized they are oxidized to carboxylic acids now right this part the where they say so this part no, it does it's not on this level anymore so it says c is C produces dense white fuel with SOCl2 along with a white solid. Now that 
to get the white solid, you have to add ammonia, but we don't do that reaction anymore. So I'm just going to modify the question. Just ignore the part about a white solid. All right. So C produces we use D as our A chloride. Good. So if they were actually no, it would be phrased in a way so that you would have to draw the structure of B as the A chloride. Well then, so C, it was our carboxylic acid. And D, let me just put D as the word. B would be the A chloride. B. So in the carboxylic acid, Return with the HCl and the SO2. Good. All right, give you a minute and then we'll start again. Yeah. 